Hello, Danny. Come play with us. Forever. And ever. Oh, I got a six. I guess I win. Your punk bitch, Danny. What's up everybody, Fars from Two Bats Gaming here, and first off, let me wish you all a very happy Halloween. Personally, Halloween is my second favorite holiday, just after July 14th, International Nudity Day, and I would imagine many of you love it as much as I do. A childhood spent watching late night crappy gore fest movies has made me a huge fan of the horror genre, and as such, I've decided to hunt down some of the best board games for fans of the macabre. Now, I will admit I am not the first reviewer to tackle this sort of thing, and I'm sure I won't be the last either. I've spent a fair amount of time looking over other reviewers' best horror game lists, and there are many great suggestions, but it does kind of seem like a majority of the lists are naming the same games over and over. So with this list, I am attempting to bring more light to some of the board games out there that give me a really spooky or scary feeling when I'm playing them, but I feel they may have been looked over because they don't necessarily market themselves as strict horror-themed games. That being said, there are some classics of the genre that get it so right that I would feel remiss if I did not include them in this list. So anyways, that's a bit of background story for this list. Now let's jump straight into it. Kick off the lights, lock the doors, and try not to yell at the screen when the inevitable cliches happen, because here's our best board games for horror fans. Time Stories. One of the hottest games of 2015, and with very good reason, is Time Stories, a cooperative time traveling adventure for two to four players. Time Stories is a game unlike any other with a mind-bogglingly deep attention to detail and planning. Time Stories as a game is kind of composed of two parts. First off, Time Stories itself is the system, and then there are modules slash expansions that function as scenarios that you will play through using the Time Stories system itself. Got it? Good. So as far as the scenarios go, I am specifically referring to Asylum, which is the first scenario included with the base game. Now at this point, I should mention that it's almost impossible to talk about or show parts of Time Stories without it being a potential spoiler. And while I'm taking care to avoid them, if you want to avoid spoilers, no matter how minor, now would be the time to skip forward to 415. And oh yeah, Snape kills Dumbledore, Han Solo is Kylo Ren's dad, and Santa Claus is real, he just avoids you specifically. In Asylum, players will be taking on the role of one of a variety of receptacles, in other words, host bodies, as they teleport through time trying to solve the mystery behind the appearance of a temporal rift in a 1920s French insane asylum. They will have to solve intricate puzzles, fight unearthly monsters, and use their wits to interpret clues. And that's about as far as I can go without spoiling anything, which I really don't want to do. Just trust me, the game is simply amazing. There's very few games that manage this sheer depth of storytelling, and I am simply amazed at the amount of design planning that was necessary to pull it off. Seriously, what are you doing? Go get it now. Also, the first expansion is all about zombies. We'll cover it another time. Sign here, please. Thanks. Castle Ravenloft. So you want to play Dungeons and Dragons, but your mom already kicked you out of the basement? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I played the shit out of 2.5 back in the day. Put down your mall katana. Well, then you should check out Castle Ravenloft, my personal favorite in the D&D board game series. Castle Ravenloft is a co-op dungeon crawl for one to five players who will take on the role of an adventurer fighting the evil forces that plague Barovia. In other words, a whole host of undead baddies from elemental skeletons to moody vampires to friggin' bone dragons. I mean, my god, look at this mini, it is amazing. The dungeon layout is revealed via a randomly drawn tile system, and your characters will encounter a variety of events, monsters, and loot, all straight from the classic D&D you know and love. 
No, the massive depth of AD&D proper is not explored in this game, it's much more simplistic than that. For instance, the max level your character can reach is 2, but take it for what it is, which is a cool little co-op dungeon crawler, and we're sure you'll enjoy kicking some bloodsucker butt. The rules are well thought out, the random system is cool, and the component quality is excellent. Definitely worth a look. Uh, I don't know, I don't know where he went. I'm, I'm, I'm by myself now. I don't, I don't know what to do. Which way, which way do I go? Maybe, maybe this way? No. What's that? Oh, I see him. I see him. Hey, hey, hey. Are, are you okay? Are you okay? Thanks. Awesome. Ghost Stories. Want to even up the score and kick some otherworldly ass? Then Ghost Stories is the game for you. A cooperative kung fu themed dice roller for one to four players, Ghost Stories is one of our favorite games, so much so that we selected it for the first position in our board game classics series. Players take on the roles of a team of Dallas monks tasked with defending their village from a horde of supernatural baddies summoned at the hands of the evil sorcerer Wu Fang. Players will need to combine their special abilities, along with a fair bit of luck, to eventually defeat Wu Fang and his minions, thus bringing peace back to their lands. I should note that this game is seriously tough. Do not expect to win on your first playthrough. Also, the horror theme, while definitely present, is not anywhere as deeply ingrained as is the case with the other games on this list. However, the art is seriously spooky, and there is an overwhelming feeling of dread that comes with each new ghost added to the board. If you're a fan of kung fu and horror, this is the game for you. We have both a full review and how to play for ghost stories on our channel, so go check them out for a much more in-depth look. Oh, sorry, wrong game. Wanna play? Shadows over Normandy. Nazi zombies. There, I said it. Yeah, that pretty much sums up Shadows over Normandy, which is a grid-based squad-level tactical war game. No, 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 don't click that close button. Bear with me on this. A tactical war game in which players will take on the role of one of three factions, American GIs, Cthulhu-esque Swamp Beast Deep Ones, or the aforementioned occult-obsessed Black Sun and their undead troops. No, there is no actual Nazi theming in the game beyond the names of some vehicles, but come on, they're totally Nazi zombies, right? The game is a standalone re-theming of the popular Heroes of Normandy World War II war game, and they both function on more or less the same rule set. Now, when I say war game, you should know that this game does not take itself too seriously. I mean, you can cast spells, you fight Cthulhu, and there's a sacrificial version token for the last scenario. No, I'm not kidding. Turn order takes place on a simple number-based back and forth system, and all combat is ultimately resolved with just two dice. And this game is massive. There is a huge amount of cardboard in the box, and the scenario maps can take up even the biggest of tables. The depth and variety of units and options available to you are amazing. That being said, it is still a war game at the end of the day, and it is a fair bit more rules heavy than anything else on this list. Speaking of rules, be forewarned that it will take some decent work on your part to learn how to play Shadows Over Normandy. The rulebook is a Kickstarter classic massacre, complete with translation errors and missing references. You will need to spend some time on the game's forums to figure everything out. However, if you're willing to put a little work into learning it, Shadows Over Normandy is an awesome game with a theme I've never really seen covered in this depth. If you've played Tannhauser, it's kinda similar but with all the knobs turned up to 11. Yes, coming to grip with the rules is a bit of a brain sucker, but playing the game is cool as hell.
Betrayal at House on the Hill. See, I told you there'd be classics on this list. But look, this game is a horror movie in a box. Or more specifically, it's 50 horror movies in a box. Betrayal at House on the Hill is a cooperative game in which a pack of wonderfully generic B-movie monster meatbags are exploring a haunted house and the secrets with it. All of your favorite stock characters are included. From the demon damning priest, watch the first step Padre, it's a doozy, to the teenage prom queen whose pesky clothes just won't stay on, at least not after the second act anyways. As your characters venture forth into the haunted mansion, they will uncover new and exciting ways to get themselves killed. At some point, one of the game's 50 haunts, in other words, a custom scenario, will kick in. Every one of these custom scenarios draws its inspiration straight from your favorite horror classics. As an added twist, one of the players will go all possessed and take on a traitor role. Now look, I will admit the game is not perfect. It does suffer from some pacing issues, and the sheer amount of different scenarios means you will encounter points at which you will have to liberally interpret the rules. Also, the stat sliders for the character tokens are crappier than the script to Troll 2. But no other game sends up the horror genre quite like Betrayal at House on the Hill, and it has a solid place in any horror game collection. So anyways, there's five of our best games for horror fans. Some classics, and hopefully some you hadn't previously considered. We would love it if you could leave some of your favorite horror-themed games in the comments. We're always on the lookout for stuff in this genre. But before you go all keyboard warrior and say, how could you not include X or Y? Two things. First, you try shoehorning board games into parodies of horror movie scenes. Just five was harder than you think. And two, we agree there's a ton more good horror games out there, and they're all on the other list. But anyways, here we go. There, now we included them. Go check them out. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. I'm Forrest with Two Bats Gaming, wishing you all a safe and happy Halloween, and for God's sake, always check your kills. Until next time, take it easy.